N90X back with an update on the Xserve 2008 as a Mac Pro project. things I want to just mention you know getting the server up and running running Yosemite is just so awesome and it, it, I don't know it's awesome okay but there's a few other issues that you may come to recognize first off the built-in SATA array only supports 1.5 gigabit per second throughput which means if you have a newer hard drive a three and a half inch hard drive you need to jumper between pins five and six on the back of that three and a half inch hard drive. So if, you, if you've ever looked at the back of a hard drive, you know what I'm talking about. On a SATA hard drive, there's a series of pins in the back. You need to get one of those jumpers and jump between pins five and six, okay? That'll slow the speed down to 1.5 uh, gigabits per second and then it will work. So you can use a newer drive up to two terabytes and it should work in this machine. Now. 1.5 gigabit per second is pretty slow compared to what we can moderate and do, you know, in modern times, right? Six gigabits per second SATA is the standard now. Um, there's a few ways to get around that. One way, the easiest way, well, maybe not the cheapest way, but the easiest way is to use the one gigabit network card. You have two one gigabit network adapters, right? So one of them might you might use for your standard internet access and another one, and or another one you might use for a dedicated NAS, right? So network attached storage, that could run at one gigabit per second, especially if you have it hooked up to any kind of a RAID array. Now in my other series, the Riverbed series, I actually am using one of my two Riverbed devices. One is a as a free NAS server. And throughput through that one gigabit, and I'm sharing that, I'm just using the same gigabit ex expansion, but that throughput through that one gigabit, uh, Network card is phenomenal. I mean, I'm getting, I, I don't even know what I'm getting, but I'm transferring just gigabits of data in, in less than a minute. So it's phenomenal. And I've also been able to put um, VMware images on the free NAS server in a, you know, as, as a, in a share and accessing that from the Xserve over the NAS connection. And it's working very well. And it may help you overcome any kind of uh, storage limitations you have on the on the drive that you have already okay one other thing if you would like to go inside your server there is another expansion possibility now there's actually more than one but here's one this is a o, o w c or o c w one world computing expansion card it is a tiny little card i'm going to pull it for you and it's an m sata card look at that it's super tiny and there's a 256 gig m sata drive on there it's 27 bucks plus shipping i guess and you can boot from this puppy okay now they say that you're supposed to install a new fresh copy of OS X on this so that the drivers work, whatever, but I did carbon copy. I have a Yosemite um, image on one of my bootable drives. I did carbon copy to this while this was plugged in. No drivers required, you just plug and play, and uh, it boots off of this, no problem at all. And this is giving you phenomenal speed. Uh, whereas my boot time started going down to about a minute and 45 seconds. With this puppy, I'm booting up in 49 seconds, so that's, really more than 50% increase in boost. And if you want to be doing video editing, which I do, this puppy here makes uh, Final Cut Pro X just run so smooth. It's just so amazing. So for $27 plus the cost of whatever MSATA you want to use, this is a great option. The only downside is there's only one card, right? Only one MSATA slot available. But it's, you know, anything that 
OWC sells you for the Apple and they say it works, it definitely works. It's guaranteed to work. It's it's and it's good to go. So I recommend this. If you just need a to say you want to use this as a boot drive, right? Boom. That's good to go. However, for a little more money, $69, here is another alternative. Four MSATA slots are available on this card and or four SATA slots. So you can't use all eight. You can use a combination of either all four or a combination of whatever of M SATA and SATA. Now you have to change the jumper positions. The jumper positions by default, by the way, where the uh, arrow is pointing. If you look where the jumpers are, the arrow is pointing. That is one. That's number one. Pin one two. One two. It's the default, and that's for SATA. If you want to use M SATA, you got to switch them all over. There's a manual that comes with this card, and I'll put a link to it where I got it. Sixty nine bucks. But um, they told me that I could use all eight, which I was so excited about, but you can't. You can only use, like I said, any combination of four, four, four SATA point to point and any combination, either whatever, any combination of M SATA and SATA. The only downside is in the 2008 server, this barely fits. It fits, but it only fits in... PCA, PCI slot two. So inside the server, this is what's called slot two over here. And this is where the built-in video card was. I removed that because I initially put in this GTI, GT, uh, GT120, it was over here. But I had to move it over here so that this card can fit. And as you can see, when it's plugged in, It's sitting like this, and because of where the memory is, I could not, I cannot connect up a SATA, a SATA cable. Simply cannot connect it up. Now, certainly I could hack this, maybe get a PCI extension ribbon cable, which would um, allow me to not use the built-in, the built-in uh, rig that comes with it, right? So just expand this out and not use this. That is an option. But another option I'm waiting to get is a MSATA to SATA converter, which potentially will allow me to plug it into one of these slots here and get one M one SATA device off of an MSATA card. And I'll give you an update on that when it arrives. I haven't gotten it yet. Now, why would you want to do that? Look, obviously this... This rig here is BA and it's working fine. It plugs and plays. However, again, they say that you should have a fresh copy of OS X installed on this so that it recognizes the card. But as we all know, it doesn't work um, by default because the Xer no longer officially supports uh, OS X. Uh, well, anything older than o newer than Lion. So you actually cannot do it. But I did a carbon copy to one of these devices and it wouldn't boot. However, there's a there's three 256 gig modules here and this blue one is a 60 gig module, which I, I had originally here. This doesn't really make any sense. I originally had it here and installed, the o, installed OS X on it. And of course, and it booted no problem with a carbon copy image. So I used this, created the carbon copy image onto this on a 60 gig module, and it was booting fine. But of course, 60 gigs for OS X 10 is, is not enough, especially if you have, um, I mean, just as a boot drive, fine. But if you want to have, you know, um, Final Cut Pro, compressor, all this other stuff on there, you're going to run out of space. So I took that 60 gig module, popped it in here. And now it's booting off the 256 module, which I carbon copied, no problem. So I can't explain it. I don't know. I can't explain it. Why is it working now? All I did was add the 60 gig module. It's not even booting off the 60 gig module. Is it possibly the fact that I switched everything over to MSATA? I don't know. Um, I haven't dug into it. When I get that uh, MSATA to SATA card, I will be pulling out some of these to play with that, and I'll have an update on that. But... These two cards allow you to run at 
really accelerated speeds way faster than the 1.5 gigabit per second. Um, it's, it's pretty nice and it really allows you to accelerate everything. So booting with this, having all your applications on here, they just fire up really fast and maybe your data would be on the hard drive. So this is just an, uh, an update to the project and what I've been working with. It's working really good. I really like it. Um, and I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you an idea that you can really breathe a lot of life into this machine and do a lot of stuff with it. Now, if I, of course, if I had less memory, this puppy is fully populated, 32 gigs. If I had less memory in here, you know, um, maybe you could configure the memory in such a way that you would have room to plug in some SATA drives. Oh, why, why might you want to have uh, mSATA and SATA? Well, of course, it's capacity and price, right? You know, you can buy a two gig SATA drive for, you know, like a hundred bucks, right? Less than a hundred bucks versus, uh, you know, 256 gig MSAT is gonna cost you a hundred bucks, or roughly a hundred dollars. So the capacity, so if you can get the capacity and the speed, even if you double the speed, went from 1.5 gigabits per second to three gigabits per second off this card, that would be phenomenal. It really would be phenomenal. So that is what we're working on. And, um, well, I'll keep you posted. From N90X, thanks for watching. Please rate, subscribe, tell your friends. Till next time, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.